Good morning again. On behalf of the Ralph H. Johnson VA Medical Center, it's my pleasure to welcome you to our Memorial Day ceremony. Thank you all for sharing in this occasion as we remember the brave men and women who gave their lives for our freedom. At this time, if you are able, those who are seated, please stand for our invocation, followed by the national anthem sung by members of the Charleston Symphony Orchestra, Gospel Choir and Spiritual Ensemble, Ms. Laverne Ennis, Ms. Susan Kelly, Ms. Charity Blue, Ms. Michelle Graham, Mr. Kevin Thorne, Ms. Jean Jones, Ms. Deborah Alston, Mr. Nat Malcolm, and Ms. Sonora Catino. The Pledge of Allegiance will follow, led by Mr. Emerson Beach. Would you please rise for these occasions? First of all, I will offer our invocation. Would you join me in our invocation? Eternal God, we pause this day to remember those men and women who died in defense of our country so that we might all be free. We honor their names and memories as we recall the valor, the dedication, and the willingness to give their life as a supreme sacrifice. May we recall those men and women who fought in all conflicts our great country has been engaged in. May we praise your name and do good unto others today. Amen. I'm a VA patient and I'm still a little nervous, so I'm going to say the word I and everybody else has to say the rest. So okay. I do love our country and love everyone here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please don't forget there are flags back there to at least take a look at. Please be seated. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to present to you our Chief of Staff, Dr. Florence Hutchinson. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming to join us for our Memorial Day ceremony. It's a very special occasion for you, and it's wonderful to see all the, the face, many faces and our many veterans that are here. So I'm honored to take part in paying tribute to the memories of the men and women who wore our nation's uniform and for whom duty to country meant great, if not ultimate, sacrifice. We often hear the phrase, freedom is not free. It is not a cliche or a slogan more suited to bumper stickers. Freedom is not free is the banner under which more than 40 million Americans have fought. And more than one million of our sons and daughters have died since the days of the American Revolution. Today, 
We salute all of our military heroes who have served our nation and pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. If you are a family member of a veteran, you deserve our thanks as well because families of warriors also serve on the home front and in the hearts of their loved ones who are, are on the home front. And to those who have lost a husband, a wife, a son, a daughter, a grandparent, an aunt or uncle, anyone dear to you, we recognize your loss is a deeper one than many will ever know. We are truly grateful for your sacrifice. We also remember those who came home but paid the price of serving in other ways. Some have injuries and physical disabilities, other carry scars that are invisible, but are just as real. To these men and women, we humbly say thank you and Godspeed on your journey to recovery. Three weeks ago, I had the privilege of visiting the Normandy beaches where the D-Day invasion took place almost 70 years ago. Like many of you, I have seen the movie, The Longest Day, that tries to capture the challenges that were faced by our World War II veterans, their commitment to liberty, and their bravery under extreme conditions on both land and sea. I would like to share with you my perspective that the movie falls far short of what those soldiers endured to preserve our freedom. I visited the American Cemetery there and was very privileged to have the opportunity to honor those men and women who died for us to protect our freedom. For us in the Veterans Department of Veterans Affairs, Memorial Day is a very special time of remembrance for the fallen, but it's also very much about those who remain and our opportunity to honor those who continue to serve to protect our freedom. More than 23 million veterans are living, working, and contributing to our society today in all ways. In serving those who have served us, we honor the heroes who gave their full measure. I also encourage you to join Americans Everywhere next Monday, May 26, at three o'clock for the Memorial Day National Moment of Remembrance. Wherever you are, please pause for a moment in this act of national unity to, excuse me, to demonstrate your gratitude and respect for those who died for our freedom. Thank you for being here today and for your commitment to keeping the memory of our veterans alive. Thank you. At this time, I would like to introduce to you a true American hero, Colonel Judith Hughes, commanding officer of the 628th Medical Group 628th Air Base Wing, Joint Base Charleston. Colonel Hughes oversees medical services and medical readiness for the 628th Air Base Wing and the 437th and 315th Airlift Wings, providing health care for approximately 36,000 eligible beneficiaries. She is a graduate of the Air War College and completed her Bachelor of Science in Nursing at St. Anselm College in New Hampshire. Colonel Hughes, Thank you for your service and thanks for sharing with us today. All right, I guess it's hard without talking into the mic. Now I talk with my hands though, so this might be a problem, okay? <laughs> um, thank you um, very, very much for um, allowing me truly the privilege of being here with all of you um, today. Um, I wanna thank uh, Mr. Isaacs and Carolyn Adams, those um, directors who have been here. Um, we even have Senator Graham's office represented. Thank you so much for being here today with us. Um, all the very many service, the veteran service organizations that are here. We have the Blue Star, we have the Marine Corps. I know there are others here as well. Um, and all the staff of this amazing medical center. Your dedication to military veterans is inspiring and has absolutely totally changed the way I view the VA medical system. It's hard for me not to think of the words of President John F. Kennedy when I think of Memorial Day. Remember he told you I went to college in New Hampshire, so yes, I grew up in Massachusetts. Don't hold that against me, I've been gone 30 years. <laughs> um, but President Kennedy stated, a nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but also by the men it remembers, the men it honors. This weekend, we don't honor 
those men and women for nothing. We honor them because they have faithfully served. And as my boss reminded me this morning, this is a time to celebrate and remember our dads, our moms, maybe a sister, a brother, maybe just a dear friend who have made the sacrifice of service. I actually wish we could recognize Memorial Day every day. <laughs> After all, according to the historical documents I reviewed about Memorial Day, officially this day is set aside to celebrate and honor United States men and women who died serving their country in the military. And I, for one, actually like cemeteries, one of my favorite places to visit when I travel across the country. But if that's the purpose of Memorial Day, why are we all here? Why aren't we all only leaving flowers on cemetery headstones, dressing in dark colors, and weeping uncontrollably for those who have paid the ultimate price for serving their country? Why are we here, shoulder to shoulder, talking about our plans for this glorious weekend God has promised us, and probably preparing to wear white for the first time this year? <laughs> well. I actually believe it's because Memorial Day was set aside to honor and to celebrate. It is our nation's responsibility to honor those we owe an unpayable debt to, those who died while serving our country. But this day is also about celebrating the living. We set aside this day to celebrate each and every military member, veteran, and family member who was willing to do the same, to sacrifice, maybe their lives, their limbs, their spouse, or their own precious child, or maybe just their comfortable lifestyle. But on Memorial Day, we are celebrating it all, all who were willing to sacrifice for their country, our country, the United States of America. And I can't think of a better place to do that than in this courtyard of this very special Veterans Medical Center. Every group of heroes Dr. Hutchison highlighted is represented here today. And I am unbelievably proud to be standing here among you. I did not grow up a military brat. I had one uncle who served in Vietnam and I remember his homecoming only. I remember a big yellow ribbon on a big tree in my grandmother's driveway. My uncle never talks about that tour or his combat experience. He has never sought care from the VA. I had a very close cousin who died in Iraq in 2009. He was a 20-year-old Army tank driver, and there will be a special celebration in my hometown on Monday that will honor his sacrifice and celebrate his service with his family and friends. I consider them both veterans. So what I find interesting is that despite serving in the Air Force myself for 27 years, to include a tour as the chief nurse in our largest combat hospital in Afghanistan, Despite preparing to retire from active duty this December, I have a hard time thinking about myself as a veteran. So I started to ask myself, what's a veteran look like? Why can't I be one? <laughs> well, we currently have 23 million veterans living in the United States today. Now, I didn't know how to figure that. I actually tried to picture, what does 23 million look like? I couldn't do that, so I did a little math. Mind you, it wasn't math in public. I used a calculator on my desk. <laughs> and what I found out is that out of the population of the US, 7% are US veterans. Now, we live in a military city here. So you almost can't bump into someone or walk down the elevator and not be on an elevator with a veteran. But that is not the case across our United States. Veterans are a rare jewel, 7% in the US. But despite continuing military operations, that number of living veterans is projected to drop even lower. In 25 years, even if the US population stays exactly the same, which we know it won't, it's gonna grow, in 25 years, there will be less than 5% of people in the United States who can say they are veterans. I was encouraged to learn that 11% of those veterans are women. And, and I'll tell you why that actually surprised me. 15% of women serve on active duty in the military. So I actually expected that veteran number to be lower. So they're pretty close. 11% veterans, 15% active duty. Um, but the women population of veterans is actually gonna grow. That 
of all of us, 20% of that number is going to be women in 20 years. So that is a piece, a piece of that's changing. So it helped me say, okay, I could be a veteran. I'm getting closer. <laughs> I could be there. Now, many of you know the story of the brilliant photographer whose work hangs in the Hall of Heroes inside. Sergeant Stacy Pearsall was an Air Force combat camera specialist. Stacy here today? Oh, I didn't see her. Okay. As she recovered from combat injuries sustained in Iraq, she spent hours in these VA waiting rooms surrounded by veterans from every generation and branch of service. Often, she was asked if she was someone's granddaughter. It was very rare that they assumed she was a veteran first. She had to explain that to them. So this started her on an amazing journey all across the country to capture what she calls the portrait of a veteran. And you can look at any of her work, any of her pictures, just walk down that hall. And there isn't one thing that comes across as a theme that our veterans are very diverse. We come from a lot of different backgrounds and an awful lot of different traditions. There is no one picture of a veteran. So what's not different about veterans? What's not changing? I firmly believe it is their willingness to serve, to sacrifice their lives for their country, for one another, that is the common thread that binds veterans and is the reason we also celebrate the living on Memorial Day and not only on Veterans Day. But I also happen to know that veterans share a desire for accessible quality health care. It is a privilege that was earned by that willingness to sacrifice. In a 2010 national survey of all veterans, it was calculated that 70% of all U.S. veterans use the VA medical service in some way, shape, or form. That's a pretty high number. We're serving an awful lot of folks. And this is one reason that the VA Medical Center here stands out as one reason I am very proud to say, hopefully I have been able to impact that care during my time on active duty. As the commander of the Med Group up at the Air Base, I am blessed to be part of a group called the Low Country Federal Healthcare Alliance. Kind of cool name, Low Country Federal Healthcare Alliance. So this alliance, this group is one of only 12 groups across the entire country that is a DOD VA joint venture site. That means we get to compete for money and do things together with the VA and the DOD medical community. So this voluntary partnership's actually been in place since 2006. And the four places that joined in this partnership were the VA here, the 628th Medical Group up at the Air Base, the Navy Health Clinic in Charleston, and also the Beaufort um, Navy Health Clinic. So all of those four folks come together in this group and they have completed multiple, what we call a joint incentive fund. It's a way to save money and get a better care, better access. Because this is improved access for patient care, for active duty, for family members, and for veterans. It's also resulted in significant cost savings. So far, over $1 million has not come out of the taxpayer's pocket because of the joint projects we have been able to do. But most importantly, I think that it starts people on this journey of transition from active duty to veterans, and there isn't a different standard of care. It is the same standard of care, and it is all about the patients who have served and who have sacrificed. There's been a lot of press, not so good press in the news the last couple weeks about veteran medical care. So I am very proud of the work we do here in the Low Country to improve the care for all those heroes who have sacrificed for our freedom. As Dr. Hutchison reminded us earlier, freedom is not free. We are free because of the brave, because of those who have sacrificed. I came across this quote that'll stick with me this entire Memorial Day weekend. Who kept the faith and fought the fight, the glory theirs, the duty ours. It is our duty to honor those that died serving their country. But it is also our duty to celebrate those who have been willing to do the same. And I am proud to be part of that wonderful legacy. Thanks to each and every one of you for all of your service, for what you do to support our nation and care for our military's most precious resource, its people. I pray you each have a wonderful, honor-filled Memorial Day.
Thank you, Colonel Hughes. I would like to ask you to join me for a moment of silence, just a moment of reflection for those we have lost and those we remember on this day and this weekend. Thank you. Thank you all for being a part of our Memorial Day ceremony and for honoring our veterans. May God bless the memory of all who have made the supreme sacrifice for our nation and all of those who have served and were willing to make the same sacrifice if need be. I hope that you have a wonderful afternoon and a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Thank you again.